uh, organizational best practices in order to figure out how to provide the maximum clarity. Here's what I want to tell you. <laughs> Leaders build clarity by working relentlessly on clarity of purpose, clarity of plan, and clarity of responsibility. So clarity begins by knowing what the hell it is that your organization is trying to accomplish. If you don't know what effect you're trying to produce in the world, you're very unlikely to produce it, and you're very unlikely to enlist other super talented people to come and join you. Deep down, I believe that every one of us wants to give our gifts to the world, to contribute, to positively impact our fellow man. Companies that lack purpose find themselves full of employees who struggle to find motivation to contribute their best. Because I mean, how long can you realistically work working on something that has a clear positive impact on the world? And that's why mission statements like these are so effective. I used to work at Google and was so inspired by the idea that I was contributing even a small amount to organizing the world's information and making it universally accessible and useful. Or when I worked at Facebook, the idea that the work I was doing could contribute even a little to giving people the power to share and make the world more open and connected was just endlessly inspiring to me. I've been inspired recently from the outside by Airbnb trying to create a door to an open world where everyone's at home and can belong anywhere. I mean, that's not just having a mission, that's being on a mission. So, to see if you have clarity of purpose, try to answer this question. Why does your company exist? If it's wildly successful, how is the world going to be different than it would otherwise have been? Notably, I made a lot of money is not an answer. Money may be required in order to fulfill your purpose, and money may be the result of fulfilling your purpose, but it is not itself a purpose. It's easy to assume that once you have clarity of purpose, that everyone else will also just automatically get it by osmosis. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So here's our purpose at Asana. To help humanity thrive by enabling all teams to work together effortlessly. This is the reason I go to work in the morning. And I see my job as a leader as being to constantly ground us in this purpose over and over again. Because it's just so easy to forget in the fog of war. So one example of how we do that is every week we share quotes from our customers that talk specifically about how we're helping them to be able to work together with less effort, how we're achieving our purpose. And we also, right after that, will show quotes of customers who are pissed at us for all the ways that we're falling short, which inspire us to continue this ongoing journey. So not long ago, a developer on my team fell into a funk. He was wondering you know, what he was doing with his life, did it have meaning? And so I asked him, well, what's the very next thing you're about to work on? And he said, repair an old chunk of code. And so I just kept asking, I didn't give him any new information, I just kept asking him why and why over and over again. And it kept leading to these higher and higher levels of purpose. Where eventually he said, well, okay, that's going to improve the product. And then I was like, why? And he said, well, that's going to enable teams to be able to accomplish their goals. And then without anything else, he just smiled and was confident that what he was doing had meaning. <laughs> So you know what's more frustrating than having no purpose at all? It's having a meaningful, exciting purpose that no one actually knows how to achieve. The default state of most organizations is chaos. So how many of these things sound familiar to you? Projects slipping way past their deadlines. Whole teams marching dutifully in a direction, only to find out next week that actually the higher-ups had pivoted the direction last week. Meetings ending without any clear, actionable next steps, so it feels like that hour just got wasted. Even when I was at Google and Facebook, we often get to launch day and find that there were 10 critical tasks that had somehow fallen through the cracks. So that's why at Asana, we are so fanatical about making sure every single person on the team has maximum clarity of plan. So after many years of experimentation, here are some of the processes we found most effective. We start with a project in Asana called Master Strategy. It has all of the top level pillars for how we go about executing our mission. And then every few months, we take a whole week where we, everyone in the company gets together into committees. And those committees think about what are, what are our next steps going to be? What are we going to do in formalizing the plan over the next several months? 
if you don't think you have a, have a week to spare, we find this week just pays for itself so many times over in reducing the day-to-day -day confusion the rest of the time. So the output of that whole week is a set of key results. These are clear, measurable goals that each private company is aiming to achieve by very specific dates to which they've committed. And then these goals get translated into projects, into tasks, into individual subtasks. And of course, over time, new information arises, and as it does, we update the plan. So, all, so everyone is always on the same page. So this plan isn't just some dusty document that a few execs wrote and then forgot to send out, which I've seen is the default state in most organizations. No. Everyone gives input on this plan, everyone has access to it, and everyone can see how their piece of the puzzle fits in, which inspires commitment throughout the entire organization. So then at the end of each four-month period, we measure how many of our goals we accomplished. For successes, we celebrate. But in case when things didn't go according to plan, we systematically ask why, over and over again, until we can get to the root cause of the problem, because from there, we can make the last <coughs> meaningful fixes. We are definitely not perfect at this, but this kind of process we find just eliminates a ton of stress, gives a ton of clarity, and gives us so much more confidence that the work we're doing day to day, minute to minute, is actually advancing us steadily toward our goal. Alright, so we've talked about giving teams clarity on why, the purpose, and clarity on how, the plan. So what comes next? Clarity on who. The goal here is to break your plan into pieces, making one person, not zero, not two, responsible for each of those pieces. Everyone in our company has their own set of areas of responsibility, which are listed publicly. So this creates clear accountability for everything that is important to making the company operate. By having just one directly responsible individual, we eliminate all kinds of ambiguity, all kinds of politics, and make sure that each person in the company is working on an area that they are personally passionate about. Now, the person who's responsible isn't just the one who's on the hook if something fails, but also the one who's holding autonomy and decision-making power over that area. Because as a leader, you're not there to mandate the how of how people get work done. You're there to give them a specific outcome and then give them trust and space to deliver it. Because look, you hire people for their skills, for their brains, for their abilities, if you're treating them like robots to carry out your tasks mechanically, you're losing most of their value and eventually having to lose them altogether. So I see my function as a leader as instead being to advise, to coach, to serve, give people the resources they need, check up on them regularly, and evaluate their success. And you can even advise your teammates strongly, but at the end of the day, if someone's responsible for that area, you need to either trust them or replace them, but not metal. And then, like plan, responsibility is nested. So big goals really belong to one person, you may break it down into some other goals, they get assigned to several other people. And the process continues with decision-making power getting closer and closer to leaves where it belongs, with the people who have the most time to think about that, that area and most information about it. So if you make one person clearly responsible for a task, along with decision-making power, and that person has clarity of purpose and clarity of plan, empower them to do great things. <laughs> Look, every leader has been confronted with this inspiring but vague piece of advice. As a leader, your job is to empower everyone around you. And I think this advice is great, it's just that it lacks clarity of how you actually give people the empowerment that they need. Unfortunately, I think that the how is pretty simple. As a leader, your job is to empower everyone around you maximum clarity. Clarity of purpose, clarity of plan, and clarity of responsibility. Maintaining clarity is the key habit of highly effective companies. The reason I'm so fanatical about clarity is that I think it's the difference between having great dreams and doing great things. Each of us here has a vision for the effect we want to have on the world, and I want to live in a more thriving world that can result all of our visions coming true.